Well, this is the one you've all been waiting for. In the early 12th century, Abbot Suger of Saint-Denis, when digging underneath his abbey, found a piece of Eden and extracted from it the ancient and advanced knowledge that led him to create Gothic architecture for use in his new basilica. Anyway, that's enough about the plot of the Dead King's DLC for Assassin's Creed Unity. The real Abbot Suger is often credited with inventing Gothic architecture, but I think we can probably agree it didn't involve any magic MacGuffins. The man certainly did like architectural inventions though, and his rebuilding of the Basilica of Saint-Denis really was the first building that can be described as fully Gothic. I say fully Gothic though, because it was definitely not the first building to employ any of the characteristic features of Gothic, just the first to combine them properly. Transitions between architectural styles basically always happen gradually. So what were these characteristic features of Gothic, when did they first appear, and why were they put together in Gothic? Let's start with the pointed arch. I'll talk in part 2 about what makes it work, but work it does, and people realised that long before Abbot Suger. As far as we know, arches were first used in architecture in Mesopotamia before 1000 BC, and while most arches used between ancient Mesopotamia and the early Middle Ages were round, architects did experiment with other forms of arch, and the first pointed arches appeared in Roman bridges in the later centuries of the Roman Empire. They also appeared in India at roughly the same time, though they were initially rare there too. The equilateral pointed arch, as most associated with Gothic architecture, first started to be popular for decorative purposes in Romanesque. Intersecting round arches gives a series of pointed arches, and we start seeing these used for decorative purposes on blind arcades very heavily in the 11th century, particularly in Norman architecture. It was in the later decades of Romanesque architecture that structural pointed arches start to appear in otherwise round arch buildings, and to all probability, it was a realisation of the pointed arches' structural properties from the experience with these Romanesque pointed arches that it came to be adopted by Suger for all arches and vaults in his new basilica, thus leading to Gothic. The ripped vault also predates Gothic being experimented with by the Romans, but only used incredibly rarely. It was in the Caucasus in the 10th century that it really started to be used heavily, with some evidence pointing to the Western European ripped vault being derived from these Caucasian ripped vaults. There used to be a misconception that Gothic architecture was directly derived from Indo-Persian architecture from the Middle East, but the ripped vault is the only piece of Gothic that genuinely might have come over from the East, rather than being a native European development. Ripped vaults were rarely used in Romanesque, primarily because there was no practical reason to use ripped vaults in a round arched style, where groin vaults are much easier to build. The flexibility of the ripped vault completely changed the appearance of the chancel of cruciform churches, with windows now extending from the vault rather than being sat lower down in the walls. The flying buttress, the third and last characteristic element of Gothic, is the big exception here, because rather than being discovered and then forgotten in antiquity, the flying buttress was first used in the transition period between Imperial Roman architecture and Byzantine architecture, and while it would never become a mainstay of Byzantine or Romanesque architecture, it quite commonly featured in both. These early flying buttresses looked incredibly clumsy and over-engineered compared to the grace of later Gothic flying buttresses, and unlike in the Gothic period, they don't appear to have been experimented with much during the Romanesque period. The combination of these elements into Gothic was gradual and can be seen perfectly on the Basilica of Saint-Denis. The facade was the first part of the basilica to be constructed by Abbas Suger and still features some round arches, while the choir, which was constructed much later, was not only using all three characteristic features of Gothic but also heavily experimented with different forms of pointed arch, rather than just restricting itself to the equilateral pointed arch. Go to Saint-Denis today, however, and you won't just see the work of Abbot Suger, because this church, like many others, was expanded and rebuilt over the centuries. It was also, it must be said, gradually destroyed over the centuries, being thoroughly looted in the French Revolution thanks to its association with the French royal family, and having one of its towers demolished in the 19th century, after having been struck by lightning. About those extensions and rebuilds, though, Suger's basilica was built in a style that became known as High Gothic, while the extensions were built in the 13th century in a style known as Rayonnant Gothic, Rayonnant being French for radiant. It was in this period that a lot of effort was dedicated to non-structural elements for decorative purposes, particularly the tracery of the windows. Rayonnant churches are particularly notable for their large rose windows, as famously seen on the Notre Dame in Paris. Rayonnant Gothic was succeeded by Flamboyant, French for flaming, named after the flame-like appearance of many decorative elements in this period. This was the last period of Gothic in which the structural qualities of Suger's High Gothic were used to their full extent, but enriched by inventive geometric designs for both structural and non-structural elements. Flamboyant would see most of continental Europe through to the beginning of the Renaissance, but there is another sub-style of Gothic I ought to mention, a style originating in, and largely limited to, Britain, Perpendicular Gothic. Gothic would survive in Britain for much longer than on the continent, but Perpendicular made major changes to the structural properties of Gothic buildings, generally favouring form over function and structurally ineffective but aesthetically pleasing elements like the four-centred arch. 
A general penchant for rectangular divisions dominated perpendicular Gothic, somewhat mirroring aspects of Renaissance architecture as used on the continent. There is a lot more to tell about Gothic, so please join me in part 2, where I'll talk about the structural properties of Gothic architecture, what made it unique, and how medieval architects exploited it. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe to Robert Explains, and if you hated it, feel equally free to spew vitriol at your leisure. Until next time.